Maybe you've seen in some of my previous videos, um, of course you always see my big table saw, I'm in front of it a lot when I'm in the shop. Uh, maybe you've seen me use what I like to call the toy table saw, which is a little cheap, inexpensive thing that, uh, well, it works. It's good for rough cuts and rough work, but you're not going to make any fine chip and nail furniture with it. Um, it's sort of portable, but because of the way the stand is, it doesn't fold down, and I can't close it to no cover on my truck and when I'm moving it. So it's time for an upgrade, and I've been kind of looking around for the DeWalt job site saw on the fold-up stand. And they run $600, pretty much any place you see them. Kind of watch it for a sale. Well, I found one on uh, Marketplace for $400. Brand new in the box. Guy got it for Christmas. Wife won't let him keep it. I'm going to go get it. Had to grab a ways to get this. Cold, frosty morning, but sometimes when uh, you get the opportunity to save a couple hundred bucks, you make that drive. So uh, three counties and two different states, and heading back to the renovation house, we get this thing inside and see what I got. and obviously not in the shop. I'm at the uh, renovation house and right here I got it in front of me. That was a uh, interesting frosty ride. Uh, this is a DeWalt DWE 749-1 RS uh, job site saw with rip capacity, rolling stand. I've got the whole nine yards here and we're going to unbox this thing and set it up here in a minute. Uh, again, I have this here at the renovation house because I have uh, a lot of finish work to do and we're going to be making some custom window sills and while I'll do some of the uh, preliminary cutting and stuff in my shop on the big table saw there'll be some uh, finished cuts and things I need to make and I'll need to be able to do that here on site. So the story behind this, uh, guy got it for Christmas. Uh, he didn't exactly say who he got it from but his wife says it's too dangerous and doesn't even want him to open it or set it up or use it or even have it. So they put it on Marketplace. Uh, I got it like an hour after it was put up. You know, I committed to, yeah, I'll come up and get it. And that was this morning, foggy, frosty, as you saw from the little bit of the ride there. But uh, here it is, uh, gonna set it up. Unfortunate that uh, she wouldn't let him have it, but after talking to him, well, he, let's just say he's not the uh, sharpest knife in the drawer or the sharpest pencil in the box. So maybe she was right. Well, I'm going to move the camera around here. We're going to get this thing on box and get her set up. boy. Must be why they say team lift.
Got a better way to do this. You gotta watch when you take the styrofoam off because there's parts taped in it. On both of them. Yeah. So on the first one here we got wrenches. And the miter gauge. And the other one we have the riving knife and the blade guard. And I need to get rid of some cardboard. Okay, I got rid of some clutter, so now we'll see what's in the other box here. I'm sure the stand is in there because this thing's heavy. Ooh, some assembly required. Little parts and pieces all over the place here. Wheels. Even comes with a little tool. Not real impressed with it, but I may have to use that because I don't have a whole set of tools, wrenches here. Handle. What I like to call egg crate. I'll get rid of that. Well, this is not going to be a two minute job here. A lot of parts put together. And the assembly instructions. Probably ought to look at that. Maybe a good, maybe a good time to open up a barley pop and do some uh, reading. So be back here in a few minutes after I get rid of some cardboard and get me a little cold refreshment. Okay, I hope everything kind of uh, shows up on the camera here because I'm in some weird lighting here with the sun coming in the windows. Um, <clears throat> The structures here are actually fairly simple. Uh, one thing you need to uh, look at though, I, and it took me a second, the uh, end plates are different. So this one here is the one that we put the uh, axle on and the handle and everything. It has holes in the top. The other end of the stand does not, so it obviously that would not work. And they tell you you will need the uh, little wrench that's in here and the Allen's uh, wrench, the alien wrench as I like to call them. And they also say a wrench and socket set, but I don't have that here. But I do have the electrician's all-purpose wrench. So the first thing we need to do is put the wheels on the axle. And I need to find the nuts for that. Wheel shaft. Oh, so the bags are even labeled. Oh, this is where I was really wishing I had my sockets here. These are locking nuts. I mean, that's a good thing. This little wrench is leaves something to be desired. Yeah, it's good for 10 miles an hour anyway. So these are uh, light carriage bolts. There's a hole here in the axle. We need to pass through that and go into the bottom hole on the okay next up is the handle we have these uh, handle even mark says handle and we also have the kickstand I actually got ahead of myself by one step there 
Well, this here would be the kickstand. And that bag, of course, would label kickstand. Yeah, the handle goes on the other piece over there, so I would have been scratching my head here. So we got these little plastic plugs, we got some bolts and nuts. And we need to insert this plastic plug into here so that the holes line up with the handle. Getting a couple of these preset to hold them plugs in there. And to tighten these up, you'll need this little alien wrench they give you with it and this little wrench. And I'm really wishing I was in my shop and had all my tools. Okay, now we can move on to the handle. That's on the other piece. Get your choice of positions. That down low would be the most compact, up high. Be easier to move around and carry. And that's what I'm going to be using because I am uh, of the tall persuasion. Well, okay. Let's see how many things I can drop. Put the bolt in. Piece on, figure out where the nut went. That fits into a little recess. Again, I really wish I had my sockets here. Okay, that's pretty much all there is to it for putting the stand together. I didn't video tightening bolts up on the handle, that's pretty rudimentary. So, it says in the book here. Mount the saw onto the uh, stand, turn the saw upside down, did that. It also tells you to make sure you turn it off first. Um, I suppose that is there because somebody tried to do this with a running, I don't know. The uh, handle, the base I should say, has to have the little DeWalt labels facing. Both the front of the saw, there's a label on here that says DeWalt. That's got to be towards the front of the saw. And we have a bag of bolts here. They say saw. Looks like you need about four hands to do this. Now once we get one bolt started. Okay, you don't want to tighten those up yet because you need to slide the other piece in and get everything kind of lined up and in the holes where it belongs. Hey, once you get the two halves together, there's a couple of little bolts here that came in the bag with the uh, tools. Little Allen head screws. They go through the frame handles where they come together. All you have to do is get the hole lined up. And I'll get them tightened up and we'll get this thing turned over. Well, there we have it all put together. Now i uh, got to get in into the putting the blade guard on and uh, you know it's got a blade in it already. Just to rip fence out and check this thing out here in a minute. Okay so it's not generally recommended that you run a uh, table saw in your living room but uh, as I said this is a renovation house and there's sawdust all over here anyway and we I don't know if you can see back in the background we got stuff sitting all over but it's the way a renovation goes, you got stuff just sitting everywhere. But, uh, well, let's run a piece of wood through this. Got everything assembled here. I uh, didn't go into details about putting the fence on and everything. Um, I was going to do a uh, overview of the fence alignment and the blade alignment and setting the pointer and setting the bevel pointer. But as I checked them, everything out of the box was perfect. So I'm impressed with that. So there was absolutely no adjustments to make. Got a little piece of OSB here. Going to rip a six inch strip off of it.
I'm not accustomed to having these guards on there. They're for your safety, of course. I've been around this stuff for many, many years. My big table saw at home does not have this. But uh, it's fine. It doesn't get in the way. I can still see what's going on here. Obviously, you have to take it off from using a data set. So I'm going to release this, and we'll take this down to a 4-inch piece. And we'll make it 5-inch. Nice, straight, smooth cut. So, yeah, I'm happy with it. Uh, there are some features of this. You go, you can turn this fence around. This will flip down if you're doing a narrow rip and you need to be able to get your push stick in there. Um, I may add a upright auxiliary fence to this uh, sometime in the future here if I find out I need it. Uh, but otherwise, everything seems to work and I was impressed with it being correct out of the box. So there you have it, my DWV, DWE 7491 DeWalt uh, table saw with the portable cart. It's a huge improvement over my old toy table saw, which I had to take from place to place. And this saw uh, is highly portable. It, uh, of course, it weighs quite a bit more than the toy table saw, but uh, it's a lot sturdier, has a lot more features, and it's way more accurate. Uh, so if you got something out of this, appreciate getting a thumbs up. It always helps the channel. Of course, we're always looking for subscribers. Next to that subscribe button is a little bell. You click that bell, you'll be notified when I post another video. Otherwise, I'm Roger, not in the shop, but at the renovation house with the new DeWalt saw. Huge improvement. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next one.